Hello everyone, Chris from the Brothers Take here with a non-spoiler review for A Plague Tale Requiem, the sequel to A Plague Tale Innocence, which was released in 2019. If you have already played this game, then welcome to the discussion and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please do get in touch. But if you have not played this game yet, maybe this review will help you in deciding whether it's a game you want to pick up or you want to jump into, okay? Um, so if it's a game that you're considering jumping into and you haven't played it before, there's kind of two questions I think you kind of have to ask yourself before you jump into a play to a Requiem, okay? The first question is, have you played A Plague Tale Innocence? If you have not, you really should play that one first. This is very much a part two type game. It's a direct sequel, a direct follow-up, and it's continuing some of the main story beats from A Plague Tale Innocence, okay? And it doesn't spend a lot of time trying to catch you up on what happened in that game. I mean, they reference stuff that happened in that game, but they don't actually fill you in. So you're expected to know what's going on, uh, what the deal is with uh, the plague itself without me giving anything away if you haven't played it um, and the relationship between Amicia and Hugo, the two prime characters. So you really need to have played that game first before you jump into a playtime Requiem, I feel, because otherwise I think if you jump into a playtime Requiem, you will be lost. You might enjoy some of the visual aesthetics and you might enjoy the uh, gameplay but story-wise i think you'll be lost and i think the impact will be lost on you okay so that's the first question you gotta ask yourself have i played a plague tale innocence right the second question did you enjoy a plague tale innocence if you did not enjoy a plague tale innocence i don't think you'll enjoy a plague tale requiem because it is pretty much more of the same okay i'm actually not saying that as a criticism i loved a plague tale innocence so for me this was a no-brainer I got to play this on Game Pass on the Xbox Series X, but if this wasn't on Game Pass, I would have picked it up. I would have bought it. It was a game that I was looking forward to. It was in one of my most anticipated games this year. Um, I loved the story and the harrowing bleak tale of the first game, so I wanted to see where it was going to go next. But if you did not enjoy the gameplay of A Plague Tale Innocence, while there are more options here and there are some improvements, it's not like a huge leap. It's not a. It's not like... A, you know, it's not say if you were to go from God of War 3 to God of War 2018, where it's like, yes, it's acknowledging the past and it is the same character. And in some ways it's a continuation, but it's a huge leap, totally different, you know, shift in gameplay, shift in tone, all that stuff. This is not like that. This is very much a, a continuation of the first game. OK, so those are the two questions you got to ask yourself before this is a game that you jump into, I feel. Did you play A Plague Tale Innocence? Did you enjoy it? So if you did enjoy it and you want to see more from these characters, then absolutely jump into Plague Tale Requiem. I am happy to say that it's a great game. Um, I do feel that it starts quite slow and in some places it feels quite dragged out and quite long. There are times where it's like, okay, come on, let's let's get on with it, right? Um, however, I have to say upon completion, if you are a fan of the first game, then you got to play this game uh, because the final act, and again, I'm not spoiling anything, but the final act is a must play experience. That's all I'll say. And I haven't stopped thinking about the sort of the final act of the game, but obviously you need the whole journey of the game for it all to have the huge payoff that it has. Um, but it's very powerful. Uh, there's also some amazing striking imagery in this game. Um, both from just a design perspective and also, uh, you know, they have upped the visuals in this game in comparison to the first game. I think one of the areas in which this game does lack is compelling villains, so to speak. Um, I thought the Inquisition of the first game were a very compelling villain and I thought um, the leader of the Inquisition, for example, was an incredibly scary villain in and of themselves. I understood their motives I thought they were incredibly scary, just even for a human threat. Um, so without saying who the villains are this time around, I, d I don't think they're as compelling a villain as the villain of the first game. However, there's another, I mean, there's a bigger thing going on here, right? We're still dealing with uh, the plague and what is the cause of that plague? Again, speaking vaguely here. Um, and that really is the the driving force of the game, I think. And that's the stuff that really pushed me on every time we were talking about that kind of stuff that's what pushed me on to keep going right 
Uh, this game is a little leans more into the fantasy. Um, you know, there was a, a fantasy element to the first game, but I feel like the first game leaned more into it was like depicting a horrible history, you know, reality, um, but it had a fantasy, uh, you know, supernatural element to it. This game leans far more into the fantasy supernatural element. They don't have to shy away from it. They don't have to hide from it because you're going in knowing, you know, that that's what I'm saying. Like they, they assume you've played the first game. So right from the get go, they are talking about these kinds of things and it leans way more into the supernatural in a way that I actually like some people, it might be too much, but for me, I thought it really, really worked. I think overall, if I'm to draw the comparison of the two experiences, I still think I preferred the first game. I th- I actually thought it was a more harrowing experience, and um, you know, all throughout, I kept wanting to push on. However, this second game has a better final act. <laughs> you know, that one has really stuck with me, and it's it's really strong. Um, there is some comparisons I think can be made with um, The Last of Us and The Last of Us Part 2. I think people have made those comparisons before with the first game in terms of, you know, being an older character looking after a younger character. Um, kind of a long escort mission, but done in such a way that is compelling and not like the escort missions of old where you're like, oh, God, Ashley Graham, leave me alone. <laughs> you know, like they've they've really nailed those kind of um, escort mission stories nowadays by embedding it into the themes of the story. Um. So the ways in which it compares, I think, is I I thought Last of Us Part 1, like the first Last of Us was a, a better game because of the overall experience and the crafted story in comparison to Last of Us Part 2. But I have said, even on our podcast, that I thought the Last of Us Part 2 um, did improve on the gameplay, you know, the moment-to-moment uh, encounters. I thought those were better in the second game, even though I preferred the first game as an overall experience. And this is a similar thing. I think Plague Tale Innocence is a better overall experience, but I do think Requiem has better uh, encounters. I, I don't want to say combat because, it, you know, it's a stealth survival game. It's all about hiding and then using the tools available to you. You're constantly solving problems. You know, every single location is a series of problems and you're trying to solve them however in the first game it felt like there was only ever one solution to to get through for the most part and this time around you have a lot more solutions you have a lot more options it'll always end in the same place but you have way more options in terms of directions you want to go uh tools you want to use i mean i think you can play the majority of this game without you know uh, killing any enemies or you can go through and find creative ways to take on and kill all enemies. And I mean, you know, there's different ways of doing that depending on whether the enemy is armored or has a shield or, you know, has explosive devices or whatever. So there's a lot of variety in the enemies here. And then there's a lot of variety in the ways you can take them on. So in that sense, the moment to moment encounters are far more fun. Um, but the overall experience doesn't feel as well crafted as the first game. Sometimes it just feels like, there's an extra chapter for the sake of an extra chapter. And you're like, okay, by the end of it, it's like, yeah, I mean, I, I had fun in the moment to moment encounter, but for the overall story, was that chapter necessary or can we just get on with it? It kind of feels like there's a couple of chapters before the story really kicks off. Um, But again, in saying that, I do think there's a lot of strong moments here. There's some great performances again from the voice actors. Uh, the music throughout is fantastic um really really eerie and creepy and sad and emotional and all those things you expect from playing the first game and then again the 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 final act and i don't mean just the final chapter but the final act like there's you know a few chapters in that um the the climax of the game the big you know moments of the game are really strong really really strong and so again if you played and liked the first game i do think this is a must play game some people will prefer it because of the moment to moment gameplay I personally preferred the first game again, like I said, because of the crafted experience. But I, I do think that there's a lot of strengths in this game, and it has me really curious about where they're going to go next. So uh, that's all I'll say on that. Uh, Performance-wise, this is quite a, a slow, like moving game. Um, you know, I I I think it's locked to 30 FPS. I'm not the biggest expert on these kind of things. However, I I wouldn't actually let that worry you too much because unlike some other games where that seems to be a huge issue like this is not a high octane fast action game this is a stealth survival slow moving game it's only in the moments where you are trying to move quickly 
that you start to if starts to jar with you a little bit but generally speaking you're moving slowly you're taking in the scenery you're talking to characters and there's a great new cast of characters here too um you know there's supporting characters that you'll meet i don't want to spoil anything um but they have their own various abilities that you get to use their own characteristics their own storylines and that it, it feels like you build up a nice um party of people um whose fates have become intertwined on, on this kind of quest but um yeah, so look at a Plato Requiem again. If you played the first one, if you enjoyed the first one, I do strongly recommend jumping into this one. Um, I don't know if it's one that I would play many, many times again, but I haven't stopped thinking about it since I finished playing it. So that's, I mean, that's a strong vote of confidence, I think. Um, and if you have Game Pass and it's there, why not play it? You know, uh, give it a go. See what you think of it for yourself. But now I'd love to hear from you guys as well. So look, if you were watching this on YouTube, feel free to jump down in the comments to share your thoughts, whether this is a game you've already played and you want to gush about how good it was, but, you know, let, let me know. Um, but if you're someone who hasn't played it, maybe be careful in case someone spoils something in the in the comments, you know? I mean, people can say what they like. Um, but let me know if it's a game you're going to pick up then uh, or if you have any questions about the game, maybe that will help you in deciding whether it's a game you want to jump into. Uh, and if you enjoyed this discussion, why not give us a thumbs up Hit subscribe and ring the notification bell for all future content, especially things like this where it's just a random bonus. It's not scheduled, just came up because it's something that I wanted to talk about. Um, if you're listening to us on audio platforms, then you can also touch base on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Brothers Take, again, to give your take on a Plague Tale Requiem or any questions that you have. I do hope to talk about this in full spoilers uh, down the line. But we'll 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 see when um, when any of the other brothers have like finished it, and then we can actually have a conversation or discussion about it. And we'd love to hear from you guys too. So do get in touch and uh, let us know if you're picking up or playing a Plague Tale Requiem.